Welcome to DOS Geek. Yes, we have a situation here. Yes, this is a Chromebook on my desk. I know what you're thinking. Aren't you Mr. Privacy and Security and how to de googlify your life and what are you doing with the Chromebook? Well, I had to figure out what was going on. There, there are a couple reasons why this Chromebook is here on my desk. Number one is this particular Chromebook, which we'll talk about the hardware in a later video, is made by HP. And from a hardware standpoint, really, really impressive, especially when you think about Chromebooks of old that you may have held in your hands. But the second reason is on Destination Linux podcast, we were talking about the fact that so many other operating systems are making Linux available to them. And that Chromebook OS, Risa Chrome OS, recently had made some changes to make getting Linux on this Chromebook even easier. And I wanted to find out what has changed in Chromebooks? Why are they selling so well? Why are educational institutions picking them up in such huge quantities? What is it about this little device that really is just a Chrome browser that makes people want to pick it up so much? Maybe they've added so many cool things to it that it's something everyone should consider. But that's what we're going to explore in this video. We're going to look at the software side of Chrome OS. I'm going to take you around and show you some of the things that they've been doing, and you could decide for yourself whether you think that Chrome OS has a future in the big world, in the big boy world, outside of the school system, maybe in the enterprise. I'm sure somebody out there uses these for like enterprise situations. I can't imagine what for, but let's just get into the video. So I spent the last few weeks playing with Chrome OS and this Chromebook, and I keep scratching my head, or at least I was, wondering who is buying this thing from a consumer standpoint. And then it struck me when COVID hit and parents were forced to have students and things go online to do their schoolwork, that Chromebooks are a very inexpensive device. You can pick some of them up for a couple hundred dollars. You can pick up nicer ones that were used in the still couple hundred dollar range. But there's this new series of Chromebooks hitting the market, including this one by HP here, which is the X360 Chromebook, which has beautiful hardware surrounding it. Minus, of course, the storage, but we'll get into that in a second. And so who's the market for this four to $600 Chromebook or even a thousand dollar Chromebook out there? because there's so many limitations to this operating system. Now, what is Chrome OS? Well, it's actually Linux Gen 2 based operating system. It's basically a derivative of Chromium OS. It essentially just gives you a Chrome web browser at the end of the day. That's really what Chrome OS was when it first released. But since then, they've made some improvements. They gave you the ability to use the Play Store, which is the Android Play Store here. Now, this is interesting, but you have to keep in mind that this is for phones. So a lot of the applications open up in a small candy bar like window that you would get for a phone. You can expand that and your controls and things in Chrome OS may vary depending on the type of application, especially it's a video game. Don't expect to be able to play it with the controls on your keyboard. You may have to get a separate controller. You may have to try to use the touch screens if you have that in your Chromebook but essentially you have access to the Android store, which does open up some really interesting things. You get kind of the light versions of Microsoft Word, light versions of Microsoft Excel, and the limitations of that, of course, is anything like Office 365 Excel, there's only so big of a document you can open. So if you're trying to use this Excel for work, or if you're trying to use this Excel to do some courses on SQL and things, you're going to quickly run into limitations with the type of files that you can open in these light versions. Because again, all of this was meant for the phone. It wasn't really meant for a laptop. So having the Play Store is interesting. And then of course, you can't even uninstall this Chrome browser because everything is based on this Chrome browser. And in here, you have this extension store, which opens up this weird launcher thing, which I guess is your quick access to any apps, which essentially are just extensions in a browser that you've installed here. So you can see some of the options it suggests. And then you could go to the Chrome Web Store and you can get certain types of applications like we're using here, Nimbus, I believe, to do the screen recording and things on this while I'm making this video on my main machine. Because another issue with Chromebooks is they're heavily underpowered generally 
with the hardware. But again, that's changing. We're starting to see some really impressive hardware come out with Chromebooks, but the limitations of what you can do with them are so big, it keeps me asking the question, why would anyone want that? And I really wanted to discover that in spending the few weeks with here. And the answer is nobody should. If you know any better, unless you're giving this to somebody who you're so afraid is just gonna break their computer constantly, then maybe this is a good option. But anybody who's doing any level of real computing would not find this operating system to really be acceptable. What makes this operating system actually useful is the fact that now they make it easier than ever to install Linux. So what I'm gonna show you here is if we go into our settings, they've made it super easy to basically get a Linux terminal available to you. So this isn't gonna give you the GUI Linux, it's gonna give you the terminal where you can install applications on this, this device under advanced. And if we go here under developers, there's gonna be an option right here, Linux development environment. And you just do that, install it, and boom, you're gonna have a Linux terminal available to you. And that opens up a whole new world, right? Now we have access to a real IDE if we wanna do programming like Atom. We have available availability of Steam so we can do some real gaming outside of games on the Android store that are full of ads and other things and spyware and all of that other junk. We have ability to install things like GIMP and Cheese and DeBeaver if you want to do SQL connections or Postgres or anything else. Only Office, Standard Notes, real programs, a new browser like Firefox, but the desktop version, not the Android version you would get in the Play Store, which again is severely limited compared to the full desktop application. And that's what you find with this device all the way around is everything is limited, everything's locked down. So it makes complete sense to send this home with schools. It makes complete sense that parents might buy this during a pandemic, like during COVID, but your applications to do anything real with this machine start to become very limited until you install Linux, which begs the question, why did Google not just release Chromebook as a Linux operating system and allow you to just utilize Linux so that they would have a real desktop environment, a real system where you can install applications like GIMP and other things to do actual work, Blender and animations and all of that. And if you're a consumer, you'd be better off spending that, taking that two, three, four hundred dollars and spending that on a used Dell or HP or otherwise, because you're just going to have so much more control. And that's whether you're in Windows, that's whether you buy an old MacBook or whether you get a Windows machine and put Linux on it. All three of those options have so much more control and capability than Chrome does, which is why, again, it's so shocking that these things sell so well. So the other thing that really frustrates me about Chrome OS is the file management system. It's a disaster. You start to really realize how much of a disaster it is when you first get your Chromebook because you're going to realize that you're going to have very limited amount of space available to you. And I believe this is done on purpose with Chromebooks. I believe they do it on purpose because the idea is they want you using Google Drive. They want you to use online services in the cloud that you would pay extra for potentially like Stadia and other things to actually do anything relevant with this machine. So you're basically getting a machine as a service here where you keep buying other subscription models so that you can use it to its full potential. For instance, this beautiful, gorgeous X360 hardware comes with a 64 gigabyte drive. And by the time you put some of that space aside for Linux, for instance, you're gonna have very little space left. Now you can take a micro SD card and upgrade some of that memory, but your file system is a disaster. In fact, I can't get Steam to install any games to this micro SD card. It's just a complete mess. I'm sure there's a workaround with it that I haven't found yet, but that just gives you some of the limitations that you have to deal with with this device. And when you look at the file system, you've got recent audio images, video, then you have my files and then downloads and Linux files and then play files and then Google Drive and then home and then home sin and then OneDrive, which is just a drive that I connected. And then you have your SD card on top of that. So it's really not intuitive. It's nothing that you're actually used to. And once again, you have to have a separate file system just for your Linux files here because nothing is actually integrated or integrated well. And the fact that this is based off Linux in the back makes you wonder why they did such a sloppy implementation of an operating system slapping on all their Google stuff on top of it and locking it all down 
when you could have just pulled in from Dolphin or one of the other great file managers out there available on Linux. At the end of the day, Chrome OS feels like something that doesn't know what it wants to be. Throwing in the Android store was just a way of getting more apps on there, kind of. It's almost like Google's whole messaging plan where every week they announce a new messaging service for their Android phone. There's no big plan. They just keep slapping things in there. And then they realize the Android store really isn't, you know, giving people enough options either because you're just getting mobile versions of applications. So they slap a Linux easy install in there. But now we've got the Linux software that you would have to use the terminal to install uh, your software for there. Then we have, of course, the web extension store, which was the primary source originally for Chrome applications. And then we've got the Play Store. And then we've got the File Manager disaster. And, well, it makes you wonder, what does this thing actually want to be? And amazingly enough, despite all of that, these things sell like crazy. And I really do believe it has to do with the fact that these are mostly for educational institutions and people who don't know any better I've seen many of conversations where I've cringed at Best Buy when people were asking some of the associates about, well, should I get this MacBook or should I get a Chromebook? And the person saying, well, you could do everything that you do today on a Chromebook and there's really no advantage to spending the extra money on a MacBook. And I guess it really depends if all you do on a computer or ever want to do is browse the web, look at email and browse Facebook, then a Chromebook is perfect for you. If you ever want to do anything outside of that, then the only way to make this really useful is to install Linux in it, which begs the question, why not just get a laptop with Linux on it to begin with or Windows or Mac OS because all of them, frankly, are superior to this. And yes, they do give you some options when you go into settings regarding the actual security of the device and make you feel like you have the ability to affect whether you're sending information on OS improvements and certain data to them. But keep in mind, the Android store is a mess when it comes to this type of stuff, although it has improved. And there has been situations where Google has come out and said, you know, you could turn off your location tracking service and find out that that people are still being tracked even when that stuff's turned off. So can you really trust it at the end of the day? And what is the point of this device anyways? And why am I even doing this video on this? So you don't have to waste your money wondering about any of the new enhancements or talk about Chrome OS or seeing the sales charts and going, am I missing out on something great? After spending several weeks with this thing, I can tell you no. If you want to play in the cloud, instead of getting one of these devices, what you should do is head over to do.co slash DLN and get yourself a DigitalOcean droplet. They're real. They're how I learned Linux the way I learned Linux because they have over 2,000 cloud agnostic tutorials to walk you through all kinds of great servers and things that you can set up on your own. They're also a sponsor of this channel. I love DigitalOcean. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this. Thank you so much to my patrons for continuing to help support this work. I know you're thinking, I'm going to cancel my patronship because I don't want that money going towards Chromebooks, Dos Geek, but this is a public service. I spent this money so you don't have to. Besides, I'm going to sell this thing. I have no I have no use to it. I'm going to do the video on the hardware. I'm going to get rid of it because I am impressed with the hardware. If they just put a real operating system on it, we'd be in business. That's my video. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. And make them subscribe to this video.